Okay, Keith here, and now I'm going to look at doing ordinations in R. As usual, not in R itself, in R Studio. Now, here's the code, and I'm going to run through it bit by bit. So, to start with, because I'm running off the USB, as usual, I set library paths so that any packages I install during this session are installed into the appropriate location. Then I load those four libraries. Now, I'm not sure I actually need all of those four, but no harm in loading the extra ones. Then I need these two functions, and so they'll load up here, um, and cleanplot.pca includes the function PCA circle. Next, data files. And I'm using a different display here. I've got grid showing um, instead of list. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so the data has loaded, and I can look at the species file. There it is. And the species file has just the taxa with the categorical variables removed. The lines in the code do that. Now, for environmental data, the recommendation is usually PCA. So let's do that. Now, here's the results. And you'll note I've got scale equals true here. What that means is that all of the environmental variables are normalized before the PCA is done. And that is recommended because the environmental variables are typically different sorts of things, often measured on different scales. Now the species scores down there are of great importance. Um, and the accuracy scores up here would be useful if you wanted to take those data and plot them in something else, like Excel. Although I don't know why I'd want to do that. I could import them into a statistical package like Minitab and draw the graphs there. Uh, the important results are in here. And we'll note that the proportion explained by axis 1 is 0.74 or 74% then axis 2 explains another 0.2298, so about 23%, and together those two axes explain 97% of the variation in the data. And what that means is that those two axes are capturing all the variation, and we don't need to look at further axes to interpret the results. This is a useful plot. Again, this code here is taken from a variety of sources but mostly from the book Numerical Ecology with R. Um, so that creates some data that we can then use for this plot here. And what this is plotting is simply the eigenvalues for the PCA for the different axes, and they get smaller as you go through the axes, as they must because the first axis extracts most variation, the sex, second axis, most of what is left, and so on. And you can see the calculations were done there to put on that average eigenvalue, uh, which is coming in at around about 1. And our recommendations are that you should only look at axes which have eigenvalues of 1 or more, so PC2 here is very close, or axes where the eigenvalue is greater than the average eigenvalue. So both of those lead us to just using PC axis 1 and 2. So now some plots, and again this code is written by the numerical ecology with other guys. Now they've got one plot here which puts them both on the same graph in some situations. You might want them on separate graphs, so that's what we get here. And so let's have a look at them. Scaling 1 means that the points are put in locations which are meaningful, and 
the arrows point in directions of increasing values of that variable. So you can see hydrocarbon is pointing down, so impact sample 1-2, IM1-2, would have lots of hydrocarbons. Over the side here, let's make these bigger. Over the side here, nutrients is increasing this way, so IM2-2 would have higher levels of nutrients. Depth and sediment are increasing in this direction. Now, in this scaling, the angles here are not important. The, the, thing, the vectors are being drawn on by relationships to the point points. Here the angles are important and the differences in the angles tell us about correlations among the variables. So sediment and nutrient are highly correlated, um, varying almost negatively correlated, sorry, sediment and depth are highly positively correlated, they're almost highly negatively correlated with nutrients and hydrocarbons come off to the side. Uh, now the relationship to the points are not so interpretable but we can still read off high hydrocarbons down here, high nutrients going this way. And in some cases we might only want one of these two graphs. Now it would be a good idea to get hold of uh, some information on this scaling to read it for yourself because I can't explain it all that well. For the species data, the recommendation is NMDS. Uh, which I just quite didn't quite run the plot command there, so let's try that again. And try it again. There. Just need to make sure I select everything and run everything. Now this NMDS is putting on the the samples in terms of Bray Curtis differences, but not looking at the actual numeric differences, but at the ranked differences. So two sites here samples here that are very close together have very similar rankings compared to other samples. Now, this one also plots on species scores which are not so useful. So I've got another plot coming in a moment which uh, gives that a, a better outcome. Up here you'll note that stress 0 0.005 in NMDS stress is a measure of how well the locations of the samples on the plot match their actual rankings in the original data. Now we can look at that information a bit better here with another couple of graphs. The shepherd plot over here and the goodness of fit plot. Now the goodness of fit plot, um, the larger the circle, the further away or the less well fit that particular sample is. So there are some large values here but that very much depends on the scaling value used. So if I scale these points down smaller you can see here in this line in the code, point size is 5 over maximum of goodness of fit, so I could scale those up and down. More useful generally is the shepherd plot here, which is just looking at the observed dis dissimilarity in the original data and the distance in the final NMDM plot. And if that's a fairly nice looking set of points, like this one here, then we've got a good fit, but we already knew that from the stress. This is a visual confirmation. Okay, a better plot is this one here. So it's extracting the site scores from the NMDS, um, setting up color scheme, uh, extracting X and Y coordinates from those site scores to make this plot command easier to read, and then drawing the plot over here where you can see the black symbols are the control and the red symbols are the impact and there's quite clear separation between those and there's also grouping of the 
samples from sites, so impact site 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 4 and 1, 5 and the one up here that's being cut off is impact 1-1 one one. and I could change the location of the labels if that's an issue or make the graph a little bit bigger. Okay, that's going through ordination. It took me a few weeks to get this one up because of the time it took me to work out how to get these graphs displaying the way I wanted them to.